Size matters. That's what she said. <laughs> but a writer who is secure in his abilities knows that it's not how big it is, but how you use it that counts. At least when you apply this philosophy to adventure motorcycles. Because when you're off-road, the thinner, lighter, and dare I say, shorter, the better. You don't need a battering ram when a regular hammer will do. When Long Way Round first launched the big GS into the trendy stratosphere in 2004, riders from around the world jumped on the bandwagon of riding adventure motorcycles the size of freight train locomotives over pavement and occasional gravel and bragging about it at the local Starbucks. And yes, I don't need reminding that bikes named KLR, DR and XR had built a sizable following and were capable of much more than the odd gravel patch. However, adventure bikes were getting bigger, heavier and more complex with each generation and other manufacturers eagerly jumped on board with their own locomotives. Pretty soon the bikes were so big, heavy and powerful that they needed complex suites of electronics to keep them upright and stop them from launching riders into the nearest tree. And of course, all of these extra features made them more expensive which increased profits for manufacturers. Until Yamaha ruined it all by building a lighter, less powerful bike that didn't need all of the electronics and as a result sold for a reasonable price. And my has it been selling. Who knew that all you needed to do was build a lighter, simpler and less expensive adventure bike to steal customers away from your competition. Oh Yamaha, what have you done? Adventure bikes used to be so... big boned. Well, this trend has not gone unnoticed in the world of motorized adventure travel and other manufacturers have jumped on board. I've already reported on a new Kawasaki that appears to be the KLR replacement, although since that video came out, Kawasaki seems to have postponed its release by removing it from the teaser video. Originally slated to drop on November 23rd, the bike might now be coming in January. Or later. But Kawasaki is not the only one to fire a shot across Yamaha's bow. Aprilia is coming out with the 660 Touareg based on its new RS660 sport bike. And now with the release of the Triumph Trident 660, it seems that the British company is also keen on spinning its new triple into a Tiger 660. A suspicion confirmed by this spy photo from a Triumph dealers meeting which seemed to point to its intention to build a fared sporty bike and an adventure bike around its new motor. The bike on the left seems to be a mid-sized Tiger, quite similar to the Tiger 900, which brings us to the class of bikes formerly known as mid-sized adventure bikes. Those have been growing in size and now occupy a range over 850cc. The KTM 890 Adventures, the BMW F850 GS, the Moto Guzzi V85 TT, the Triumph Tiger 900, you could even include the Africa Twin and Suzuki V-Strom 1050 in this group. So what am I jabbering about if there's already a middleweight ADV bike class? The T7, Kawasaki, Aprilia and Triumph are nothing new, they're just joining the party. Well, not quite. Because the T7 has brought in a new class of bikes, it didn't try to be the most powerful in the class or have the most bells and whistles. It tried to be the lightest and least expensive. And it succeeded. It's the least powerful in the class and it's the one with the least electronics, but it doesn't require the electronics. Its engine has the kind of power delivery that doesn't need electronic taming, especially off-road. All of the other middleweight bikes need modes and menus to do what the T7 does au naturel. So this is the market that Triumph and Aprilia are going for with their bikes, which is great to see. The truth is that motorcycle companies are naturally resistant to making smaller bikes that are just as good or better than larger, more expensive machines. The profit margins are smaller. I made a video about this tendency a while ago, but all it takes is for one to break the mold and the floodgates open. When one company releases a bike that customers are salivating for, it forces the others to play the same game. Did you really think that the T7 would remain the least expensive and lightest bike in class for any significant amount of time? No chance. But thanks to Yamaha for being the first. They made a top selling bike by giving the customers what they want rather than telling them that they need as many gadgets as the space shuttle. So let's look at the information that we have about these three proposed bikes and engage in some good old speculation. First the Aprilia Touareg. We have spy photos of Aprilia testing the bike, which confirm a 21-inch front wheel. We also know that the engine will be the same 660cc parallel twin that powers the RS660 sport bike. In sport bike guys, the motor makes 90 horsepower, so even granting that Aprilia will retune the engine for mid or low-end torque, this is likely to be the most powerful of these bikes. 
The RS also features rider modes as well as a sophisticated 6-axis IMU which offers a serious electronics package. So it's more powerful than the T7 and carries all of these fancy electronics. Attractive. But what could be the drawbacks? Well price is one. Aprilia is not known for building inexpensive motorcycles. It's doubtful whether it can field a bike with all of those features within a stone's throw of the T7's price. Another drawback is reliability. The disadvantage of fancy electronics is that they break down, especially on machines built in the land of espresso and biscotti. Aprilia is also not known for their bulletproof reliability, especially with electronics, especially on a bike that may be splashing in mud and fording rivers. Should be fine at Starbucks though. The final drawback is dealer network. Unless you live in Italy or possibly the rest of Europe, you're likely to have more dealership support from Yamaha and Kawasaki. They just have more global presence. So what about a possible Triumph Tiger 660? It's hard to speculate about a bike that's just a twinkle in the designer's eye at this point. The picture looks like the 900 and sports a 21 inch front wheel. I'm glad that manufacturers are making these bikes for actual off-road use now. The Tiger 660 will be based on the naked Triumph Trident which has a 660cc triple cylinder engine making 80 horsepower and which costs only a few hundred dollars more than the Yamaha MT-07. The naked bike that has the same engine as the T7. So this bike is likely to be in the same price range as the Yamaha. The Trident also has two rider modes and a third off-road mode could be added to a Tiger version. So again, more power and electronics than a T7, although not at the same level as the Aprilia. And this bike might be close in price as well. A triple might also be very sporty on the road, as I found out when I rode a friend's Triumph 800. Disadvantages? Like with Aprilia, Triumph's dealer network can't compete with the Japanese manufacturers globally. Also, while sporty on pavement, a three-cylinder engine produces most of its power high in the rev range, lacks low-end torque compared to the twins, and spins up faster, causing rear-wheel traction to brake more easily. So better on-road, but not as good off-road, often a position that the Tiger 800 and 900 find themselves in when compared to two-cylinder rivals. Keep in mind that given how little we know right now, this is all idle speculation. That leaves us with Kawasaki's KLR replacement, whenever that's coming. And here the speculation gets wilder. Is it just the old KLR bored out to 700cc with fuel injection and a 6th gear? Did they stick a Ninja 650 motor in it and make it into a true Tenere fighter? Now it seems we won't know until January or later. Two things we do know. Kawasaki has the dealer network and can price a bike competitively. This is the only bike that I expect to beat the Tenere's price as well as have as few electronic gadgets. Kawasaki knows what customers want and will offer it to them for decades with few updates at rock bottom prices. That's why we love Kawasaki. One more detail. According to filed patents, Suzuki is working on a parallel twin replacement for the classic SV650 motor. Can a Suzuki adventure bike be far behind? I hope not. As for the T7, it's very close to the perfect bike for an adventure rider who actually wants to venture off-road as the footage you're watching attests. I'm not a skilled off-roader, but the bike continues to surprise me with its capabilities, even running with a bunch of dual sports. Sort of. It's going to be hard to beat, especially in the looks department, as none of the other concepts look nearly as mean. My opinion only, your mileage may vary. The important thing to take away from all of this is, whether they like it or not, Yamaha has forced other manufacturers to pivot away from building ever more complex and expensive machines. A large number of customers simply want two wheels and an engine attached to a good frame for a reasonable price. It's about time the industry started paying attention. I for one like this trend and want to see more. What are you most excited about in this field of light middleweights? Now that we have four weight classes, is the market too crowded? Given the fact that nobody can dislodge the mighty R1250GS, is it even worth it to carry a 12 to 1300cc adventure bike if your name isn't BMW? Deep thoughts with different spokes TV. Drop your comments below. I enjoy reading them and get many of my video ideas from them. Coming soon, both Honda and Kawasaki seem poised to upgrade their dual sports from 250 to 300cc. Are you excited? I am. Also, does our new Sportster Roadster suck? For answers to these and other questions, keep tuning in to Different Spokes TV.
If you're interested in any of the gear that Brooke and I wear or use, or the camera equipment we use to film this channel, the links are below. Everything listed there was bought with our own money and we are not sponsored by any company. However, the links below are affiliate links and the channel is paid a small amount for referring you to shop at no additional cost to you. We do not recommend any products that we are not satisfied with ourselves, but we do strongly urge you to do your research and select the correct size for items like helmets and clothing. As always, thanks for watching, your support is greatly appreciated. Please hit that subscribe button, give the video a thumbs up and leave a comment below. And whatever you ride, enjoy it. Wave at other bikers no matter what they're riding, we're all part of a brotherhood and sisterhood. Keep the rubber side down, shiny side up and may the spokes be with you.